Shut up and sit down. Hey, Aaron here. I'm at our new digs in the VR co-working space here in Vancouver, Canada. And today we're going to get started with Bridge Engine for Unity. For this tutorial, we're focusing on just running the mixed reality example included in the Unity package. The next video will go into building a fresh app from scratch or upgrading your existing Google VR app with a couple of clicks. And remember, the code for the Bridge Engine Unity plugin is open source, so you can see how everything works. At the time of this recording, we require Unity 5.5 and work with Google VR 1.40. However, native Google VR and support for the very latest Unity release is coming very soon. Right, let's get started. Fire up a new Unity project. I'm going to call this one BE Hello World. All right, now let's set up for iOS platform development. Open up the build settings and switch to iOS. Now let's import Bridge Engine. Click over to Finder, look in the Bridge Engine repo in the Unity folder, and double click the Bridge Engine Unity package to add it to your project. Bridge Engine is designed to leverage Google VR, adding daydream-like controls to your mixed reality experience, and you can upgrade any cardboard app to Bridge, letting you walk around in mobile VR. In this starting case, there's no Google VR package detected, so Bridge Engine will offer to download a compatible release from GitHub and install that too. Once you're all done installing files, look inside the Assets, Bridge Engine, Example, Scenes, and now open up the MR example. Okay, great. We've got an example mixed reality scene here preloaded for you. The bridge engine scene over here contains the scanned in world geometry. The imported geometry here is replaced by the scanned in world geometry when run on device. To use the Google VR rendering, you'll need the GVR viewer main prefab here. And to use the bridge controller as a Google VR pointer, you'll need the GVR event system prefab here. And on the main camera, you'll need a GVR pointer physics ray caster here. Then there's the GVR reticle pointer prefab that you can apply to the main camera here. And one more thing is the GVR controller visual manager. This is typically on the GVR controller pointer prefab, but we don't need the laser and controller game objects, so we just delete them. We can hit play in Unity and look around. Hold the shift key to look around with the mouse and use the W, A, S, and D keys to move around the camera uh, forwards and backwards and sideways. The Q and E keys will float the camera up and down. Now here's a handy thing. You can use your bridge controller in the simulator too. Make sure your Bluetooth is turned on, grab your bridge controller and press the home button to power it up. And voila, you've got a pointer. Pull the trigger to play some objects Cool, now you can point at an object, pull the trigger, pick it up. Now try this, use the trackpad to push and pull on the object while you've got a, a hold on it. Grab with the trigger and drag with your thumb on the trackpad. There's a pair of handy scripts that demonstrate placing and picking up things. Look in the bridge engine example scripts folder. And in the sample scene here, check out the carve side table game object. You can see there's a BE movable handler component and right above is the mesh collider. The table has a mesh collider so the pointer will hit it and the BE movable handler will let you pick it up. There's two properties here. The highlight object is shown when, when a pointer hovers over it and the grab location is for manually setting the location that your pointer beam will grab. You can add the BE movable handler to any game object with a collider. Now BE sample MR controller will let you initially place where objects should appear. The placement ring is shown wherever your pointer hits the bridge engine scene world mesh and pulling the trigger will place each object in order. These don't even have to be movable game objects, but they really do fit well together. All right, now let's build this bad boy. Now to set up your Apple team ID in Unity, you'll need to go to your Apple developer account. Look under membership and copy out your team ID from there. Got it? Good. You'll need this team ID for your player settings. Open up the build settings, click on the player settings, and paste into the automatic signing team ID. Now set your bundle identifier to reverse domain name that you own, so 
Mine is uh, digital.steampunk.be hello world. If you've got anything above Unity Personal, I generally prefer switching off the Unity's show splash screen option. Now, you'll want to revisit all these options later for icons and everything else, but for now, that's all you need. One final performance note. Open up your quality settings. I recommend using fast and all the others turned off. This is a high frame rate pipeline for Unity, and you'll want a solid 60 FPS on iPhone with minimal latency. Okay, now back to the build settings. Make sure you add the scene to your build, and sometimes for testing, I choose to run in Xcode as debug and switch on the development build so I can debug my scripts on device. That's it, build and run. Let's see how it runs on iPhone. Shut up and sit down. I want to thank Exhibital for their collaboration and sponsorship of this video. Hope you enjoy this Steampunk Digital Dojo video on Bridge. And as always, dream big, dream digital.